<laughs> Good morning. I had a little issue with my phone. I dropped my phone. I was trying to put it in a holder and I didn't realize I was live. And so it's erased. God bless you. Let's come up a little bit higher today with the understanding of the blood of Jesus. You know, tomorrow is um, uh, the witch's high holy day. And, and I, I, you know, I have a little problem. I have a lot of problem with all these people that are so excited about taking their kids out to celebrate the witch's holiday and and then they drag their kids to to church <laughs> you know it's like uh choose you this day who you will serve as for me and my house we will serve the lord you know my husband and i um we learned early uh before we were ever born again we learned not to do halloween um we had a ghost in the house and neither one of us was saved neither one of us had come to this full saving knowledge of jesus christ and um, we actually had a ghost in our house in Sioux City, Iowa. And, uh, you know, it would talk to us. I mean, we'd be asleep and, and we would hear it. We'd call the police. There's nobody inside the house. We'd, uh, I had an ironing board that, that flew in front of me when I was in the basement. There was a lot of things in the basement that really uh, didn't feel right. And uh, in that house, it was a beautiful split-level house. But... Um, it, it really came to a head when we were gone and our my children were home by themselves. And they saw the newspaper pick up by itself and go over to the table. Then they saw the hutch door open and a coffee, a coffee cup came down to sit by the newspaper. And they got so scared. They knew that that was a ghost. And uh, it's nothing that they could see, but they could feel it. They could see the evidence of it. It's like you can't see the wind, but you can you can see the evidence of the wind. Well, they couldn't see the ghost, but they could see the evidence of the ghost. And um, so they went upstairs because in, in our bedroom because it had a, a phone, it had a bathroom, and it had a lock on the door. And they tried to get a hold of us. We finally got home, and our neighbor was there. They had called our neighbor. Uh, they couldn't get a hold of us. We were at the dog track. Remember, we weren't born again yet. <laughs> we were at the dog track. And um, uh, she said the kids were scared and and um, they imagined some things. No, they didn't imagine some things. Those things were real. And so we called the only fanatic person that we know, and that was Ken's sister, Joy. And we called her and, and um, we said... Uh, what had happened, she says, oh, you have a familiar spirit in the house. She said, Ken, you're the priest of the house. Well, that made me worried because he didn't act like a priest of the house. And so he was, he, she, Ken, you're the priest of the house. Go to every single room, read these scriptures about the blood of Jesus. And they say, Holy Spirit, is there anything in this room that has given uh, the, the, the devil uh, uh, a right to come into this room? You know, because they can't come in unless you let them, right? We have a door. Well, um, so we went to every room. When we came down to the basement, and in the basement, we remember that's where the ironing board almost hit me. That's where we didn't want like to be down there. It was just like it, it was uncomfortable. And uh, we came into uh, the storage room, and he was led to open up the, he, he read the scriptures on the blood of Jesus. He asked the, the, the Holy Spirit, is there anything in this room that has given Satan permission to come in? And when he opened up the box, it was a Flintstone costume. That wasn't the problem. It was a box that it was in. And because Ken had said the blood, he had, he had read scriptures on the blood, the spirit has to answer to the blood. And so, and, and there was a face on the box and it was just like, it was alive. It was moving. And it was a really, it was a, like a warlock, uh, face on it. And, um, we picked it up. It was hot as fire. We f threw it into the fireplace. We burned it, and the ghost left because he we, we had taken away its right to be in our house. Now, th that's why we don't celebrate Halloween. That was the last time we've ever so celebrated Halloween. Now, we've been talking about the Threshold Covenant, and um, the God of your house will become the door. You know, when there's a covenant at the Threshold, uh, we're going to follow finish this tomorrow. When there's a covenant at the threshold, the God of the household will be the door. And that's why when Jesus said in uh, John 1 through 2, he said, we have come through the, uh, uh, that uh, he is the door. He has become the door. 
And uh, that's the only way we can come to God is through the door. God is the door. and uh, Jesus is the door. And he said, any other way is a thief and a robber. You know, there's a story of a young widow in Oklahoma with young children. I'm going to read this to you. She heard men trying to get into her front door. She called 911 and asked permission to shoot them if they came through the door. Permission was granted. She shot the first and was not charged with the crime. However, the partner was charged with crime, the partner of the one that was shot. They were uninvited and they had evil intent. So the, the door protects you from the uninvited and from those with the evil intent. Because the thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come to give you life and that life more abundantly. We're going to finish up Threshold Covenant tomorrow. God bless you. Thanks for being with me.